Yeah. So I don't know. They're rushing the shit out of him. You know, he even mentioned like off ball, their off ball defense on him is great. They're anticipating him kind of coming off those little curls or whatever before he gets the rock, you know? And like you said, if he gets the ball in that mid range area, they're like walling up on him and they're, you know, flashing at him or whatever. And it's so tough for him to make that decision. That's the thing about those double teams is they make, you have to make those decisions as quickly as possible. They're kind of yep. trying to turn him into a, make him go into playmaker mode. You know what I mean? Which he can do, but he's just not used to doing that here in Brooklyn. So Mm-hmm. I love it. It's flawless defense. You know, even game two, I know Carl, I, I tried to, I gave Marcus Smart credit for his game two defense on Kyrie, but then Carl was like, well, Kyrie gave his ass uh, like what? 40 in game one or some shit like oh, that. Yeah, almost 40. So yeah. it balanced out. It balanced yeah. out. But defensively that whole game, man, they were turning them over from start in game two. They were turning them over from start to finish. This is like, this is literally some of the best defense I've ever seen. I've been watching the game since about 2011, 2012. This is some of the best team defense I've seen in a long time. Like, they're swarming guys. Mm-hmm. There's effort one through five. And, Carl, you said it again. Rob Williams ain't even here. That's you what know? I'm saying. That's the scary part about it. When he come back, nobody going to be able to score nothing. Just, nah. <laughs> it, no. this, that's the crazy thing about it. They doing this without arguably one of their best – or arguably their best defender on the team, even though Marcus Smart mm-hmm. won the award. Robert Williams is Robert Williams. You, you, you know what he can do. So it's yeah. just like, I don't know. That's it's really insane. Yeah. All them little bunnies clacks and getting around the basket when Williams get if Williams gets back, I don't know if he will this series, but if he was there, he wouldn't be getting those little those little legs. Oh, he's whatever. Oh, he's smacking that on the glass. Yeah, bro. It, 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 that, so. Horford, like talking about him. Like I remember when they made the, the one of the first trades of the offseason last year was that weird little OKC trade with uh between Boston and, that involved Kimba Walker and all that. And they brought him back. We're talking about bringing in a dude who can knock down shots and stretch the floor. He's an elite defender and he's done just that. He's been one of the more valuable guys. I mean, like I said, we can talk about Tatum. We can talk about Brown. Both of them have been pretty damn good this series on both ends. Smart. But Horford, to me, has been that X factor dude. You know what I mean? That's kind of what mm-hmm. his role has been since being a Celtic. We had that short stint where he wasn't one, you know, but like those years when he was with them, you know, up to now, that's what they want him to be is that X factor type of player. Um, and he's doing it, defending at a high level when he's getting out there on Durant. He's doing great stuff. He's running the floor, knocking down some shots finishing around the basket, cleaning up for guys when they're missing their assignments. So shout out to Horford. You know, he's a vet, and he's showing why they wanted him here and why he's been so valuable to them ever since being in the Boston jersey. So shout out to, shout out to, shout out to Big Al, man, doing his thing. Big yeah. Al. Yeah. Big Al. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe it's because the coach, uh, Boston Celtics coach Udoku, maybe he used to seeing Kevin Rand in practice and everything because yeah. he was assistant coach for the Nets. Yeah. I, I think that has a lot to do with how well this team is defending them. Yeah, man, Kyrie, because they you've seen him in practice every day. So. Yeah, it, it's, he, it's like yeah, oh, my bad, but it's like he knows like their exact move every time they're like about to go right or left. Like he yeah. knows exactly what they're about to do. Yeah, yeah. Now some like I remember even a play Grant like Grant Williams like guarded him. I think in the first half in game two, and he Katie had it on like the right wing, and Grant Williams just knew. He's gonna like turn. He's gonna do something, and as soon as Katie makes a move, he slaps the ball out of his hands and forces a turnover. That's you know, like saying. there were so many forced turnovers in that first half. It was for, on for, for Boston. It's, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It's not even that. I've seen him. I've seen his shot get blocked like three or four times already yeah. this series. Yeah, I've never even seen him. I, I've never seen. I'm sure he got a shot block, obviously. Yeah. But he, he's one of those dudes where you know he can't get it. He doesn't get his shot blocked a lot because of how basically he's like seven one or whatever or seven feet. Yeah. And just the way he looks down on the defenders when he shoots it, it's hard to block it. But yeah, yeah, they've blocked this shot at least three or four times. This yes. Now, something tells me he's going to have this crazy revenge game in, in game three. He's going to probably, have- probably when they get yeah, probably when they get home. Yeah. Uh, game, game three or game four. Yeah. Well, if it's by game four, it's going to be too late. So you better have it in game three. Yeah. Well, they, they saying uh, Big Ben may be back by then. So big who? Big, uh, Dan. big Ben. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Ben. Ben. Yeah. Ben yeah. Simmons, yeah. I we'll see what Big Dan. I'm like, who's Big Dan? And, and we'll see nah. what he does. You know, like I, defense has it. Well, defense was it kind of an issue for them in game t- two, but in game one, they had great defensive spurts. Um, late in, especially in that second half, you know, they can play defense when they're motivated. People always say defense is effort. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I, like, the, like the Celtics right now are a combination of having great defensive lineups and having stellar effort, you know. Uh, ball, when Brooklyn, it feel like they're when they're motivated on the end, they can go out there and play. Match that yeah. with Simmons. You know they were able to force turnovers to stay in game one late, late. You know, in that, or just around that second half, 
having Simmons, you know, can help get up your defense a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And to where you're not asking KD to be your best defender or whatever and all of that. So, and who knows what he yeah. does offensively. I'm kind of scared of that. We'll see what it becomes. I don't know what version of Ben Simmons you're getting on that end, but we'll see how much he can help. But I know for one, defense is going to be a major thing that he's going to be able to bring to the table. You throw him on a Tatum or you throw him on a Brown. My vote is throw him on Tatum, you know, uh, kind of force Tatum to be a playmaker, or whatever, make him uncomfortable. And he can play make, but he's still not a stellar playmaker. Um, make him do that for an entire game. And I, and, and I think, um, you know, Brooklyn could climb their way back in, you know, but like I said, they're going to have to take game three. Like you guys mentioned, Katie's going to need a major, major showing. And uh, from there, you know, you kind of rely on uh, what, what Simmons could possibly bring to the table yeah. for you, you know? I didn't know, but they had a 17-point league in game two. I didn't even know that. It's no. Like, I saw it somewhere. So, they just lost yeah. that league fast as hell. Literally so. because of Boston's defense. Literally because okay. of that. It was off. Oh, yeah. It was literally off the chain. Because I didn't even know that. I thought the game was close. I only watched, like, the fourth quarter, so I thought the game was close the whole time. But I saw somebody was like, yeah, they had a 17-point lead in the second. What third quarter, I think. I forgot mm-hmm. which one it was. Yeah. And they just walked them. As you, as you, as you, as you, as you will say, Ty, they walked them down. They walked them down. They walked them down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. It, it, as I said, one of the scariest defenses I've seen in a long time. And it's just a combination. Like, ev- like every player, sometimes you see star players want to take a break on, on defense. Tatum is, is like giving 110% effort. Mm-hmm. Brown is to everybody from, it's, anybody comes in the game is, is playing defense at a high level. It's like they're all my career players, and, and when and, and when they were made, each person said what they want their uh, what's the right word? What they want their special? Yeah, they attribute a specialty to be. And yeah. everybody's just like put defense yeah. on the on the yeah. on the on the shit. There's not a weak def- I can't think of a dude who's just a flat out weak defender on this. There, I mean, guys are better than others, but who's like a weak ass defender on the Celtics right now? You, I mean, you can't really say you can't really tell. Even, bro, even Peyton Pritchard, even Peyton Pritchard get after it a little I was, bit. Yeah, I, I was, was just, I was just about to say Peyton Pritchard, but he be getting, he, he doing, he yeah. doing what he needs to do. Like, who's yeah. in the lineup that right now Brooklyn's just like, let's go at this guy right now? I can't think of anybody. You know. It's insane, man. Boston's defense is off the chain, and and like. I don't know what else. Like Udoka, man. I mean, he's he he's gotten through to these guys. We talked about how is, much is he coach of the year? To me, he is. To me, he is. With 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 how he brought the it was a record for how they started versus how they finished. You know what I mean? For him to do that rookie year in, in co- as a head coach and just like totally change the scope of this team. Like they were so so defensively early. Now they're the most dominant defense in the entire NBA. You know, so yeah. I, I got to give it to him. I, I know they're not taking yeah. playoffs into consideration, but I got to give it to him. I honestly think if Brad Stevens was the coach of this team, I don't think they've been – they will be yeah, great on the defensive end. Because yeah. I've seen it. He He's – I think he was a – I think he was a good coach, but I just think he's better in the position he is in now, and I don't mm-hmm. think he would have gotten to his players like Udoku did yeah. to get yeah. better on the, the, the defensive end. Yes, yeah, what it is about getting through the guys. Stevens had great defensive systems, but I think Udoku, like you mentioned, is better at getting – Communicating to those younger guys, you know what I mean. I feel like young, yeah. a lot of younger head coaches, yeah. they they Commun- resonate communi- with the players better. Communicating to the heart, you know, yeah, you just gotta man. get to the heart sometimes. You just yeah. gotta get to them young boys' hearts. That's all it is. And Grant <laughs> Stevens was relatively young as a coach, especially when he came in. But like I said, he doesn't do it as well as Udoka does it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So shout yeah. out to, shout out to Eme, bro. He's killing, man. He's doing his thing. 